ask you because you 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 run a cybersecurity firm and 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 governor the the issue of technology companies has become front and center and really yeah. how much responsibility technology companies should take in terms of tracking uh, terrorism activity online where do you stand on this because it is a slippery slope if if government has a back door and is starting to yeah. oversee everybody's communication when does it end but then again how do we track terrorism better well, I think uh, Jim Comey has appropriately uh, called on uh, the private sector to try to help him resolve this issue. Obviously, you're talking about the balance between uh, civil liberties and privacy and the need to uh, protect America. And I'd like to think that we could build a uh, public-private uh, partnership to help uh, answer this problem. Frankly, uh, one of the challenges we have is that uh, groups like uh, ISIS have uh, really affected a pretty good infrastructure in the social media and the internet world. Uh, you can buy off-the-shelf encryption material and frankly we need to work with the private sector to, to under certain circumstances perhaps with a warrant to break through that code and get access to it. It is a, uh, it is a real challenge for us and frankly the government's not in a position to respond to that challenge itself so it takes some leadership within the private sector to find out to, to, to get a solution that will make everybody uh, uh, comfortable. Uh, Governor, T Tony Blair just came out with a report saying that if we defeat ISIS, there are 15 other militant groups, approximately 70,000 more potential military combatants that will rise up uh, to replace ISIS. And so my question to you, sir, is that is this problem ever going to go away? Uh, is there any way to, like, uh, wipe out that entire thought, if you will? I'm not sure that... Uh given everything that we've seen and how the global scourge of the terrorism has actually has, has broadened just about on every continent that we'll ever be able to say to ourselves, we defeated Islamic radicals. But I do think the focus is destroying ISIS and eliminating a comfortable base from which they or any other uh, radical group can operate. I don't believe there are 70 radical groups that have the, the reach and the protected territory that ISIS has, so I think we're going to have to be very selective. But again, as we talked uh, earlier in this conversation, this is a global challenge, and it is not just the, the challenge to the United States of America to respond to it. That's why I do believe that under different leadership, perhaps in the future from uh, our White House, you'll see a much more concentrated effort among the community of nations to deal with this threat wherever it arises. But right now, the biggest challenge to that global community is the embedded ISIS uh, in, in, in Iraq and uh, Syria. What about, what about the cyber end of it, though? I mean, America needs to do something yep. about that, right? And, and, I mean, just this week we had the story that the, uh, there were Iranian hackers that targeted yeah. uh, the New York Dam. They were doing this through computers. What about that? And how vulnerable are we when it comes to cyber? Well, Maria, I'm, I'm glad you raised it. I, I think we need to be very plain spoken about uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, there is a cyber war that's going on. It's the fifth dimension of warfare. It used to be just air, land, and sea. Then it was space. Now we got the cyber arena. And it is China, and it's Russia, and it's Iran. And you've got organized crime. And so it's going on every single day. And in the Internet of Everything, we all have a role to play. The government is now going to share more information with the private sector. It took us four years to get that bill through Congress, but uh, it's a good relationship. It's a good start. I mean, one of the things that we do in our company, we work with this great company called Navex. One of the real challenges is to educate your employees and uh, with online education. So. The public has a role, the individual citizens have a role, and companies have a role. And that combination in the Internet of Everything, as, as uh, John Chambers said, every point of vulnerability, every access to the Internet, every point of access is a point of vulnerability. We have to understand that. We have to understand uh, that there are challenges every single day, thousands of times a day, hitting defense contractors, financial institutions, the grid, et cetera, et cetera. Let's accept that as a reality and build the relationships, uh, but that also means we have the better information sharing from the federal government. Uh, corporate uh, enterprises have invested billions and billions of dollars in it, and they have to accept it as a dynamic environment. The software you have on that system today and the strategy you've developed today may change tomorrow because the enemies are well, well trained, 
well financed, and the malware is becoming more and more specific every single day. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do, but we have to accept that, just like the global scourge of terrorism, Maria. I think there are two permanent changes in our world today that we just have to adjust to, not be breathless about, but we understand. We have to understand we can manage the risk if we accept the reality. Yeah. One is the global scourge of terrorism. The other is the cyber war that is going on and probably will go on forevermore. So do we have the capability to, to deal with this? I beg your pardon? Do we have the capability to deal with it? Let's say we accept it. I mean, wh what do we do about well, it? Well, I think, I think we have the capability to reduce the risk. I don't think we can ever say to ourselves that we're going to, I mean, the Internet, the ubiquity of the Internet is its strength. The ubiquity of the Internet is its weakness. And it was not designed to be secure. So we have to call upon the government to help us make us secure. You have to call on the companies to do it. But you also have to make sure that your employees and the C-suite, everybody understands the Here's nature the of the threat. And there are certain things that they can do. Secretary, in many instances, they're not doing them. Yeah, but listen, I mean, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, the other night on 60 Minutes basically said, look, if we have a backdoor for government, and the government's overseeing everyone's communications. That's just a back door. That opens up the door for good guys and the bad guys. So we can't have a back door. Government cannot oversee people's communications because some evil person are going to figure it out and then they're going to have it. So that's the question. Should technology companies be forced to have government overseeing communications so that they can track terrorists? Yes or no? Well, look, their opportunity to work in, this, in America in the free enterprise system exists because of government. And if I would come in to, uh, to one of these companies with a search warrant uh, based on a very specific uh, request from uh, that company to, uh, to help us with the encryption, I would like to think they'd honor it. Right. This whole notion, this whole notion uh, we can operate freely, we're, we're, uh, that we have no responsibility as citizens, or corporate citizens or personal citizens on a selected surgical basis to assist the government, I just reject that completely. It's a fair point, absolutely. Secretary, good to have you on the show. Thanks so much. Always good to be with you, Maria. Thank S you very much. Secretary Tom Ridge joining us. Coming up.